Howdy folks, my name's Reagan. Welcome back to the GWP Homestead. What we're doing today is making my little dog, Cody, a set of steps for uh, helping him get on the bed. When we bought our home, uh, of course, Cody's getting a little bit older. He doesn't like jumping and climbing quite like he used to. And since we have slick laminate floors in our house, he's got a hard time jumping up onto the bed. So we're making a set of dog steps and trying to keep this as minimalist almost as possible using plywood, not getting fancy with, with anything. We're just using some pretty basic tools to, to knock this out. Try and help him out and make something that's you know inexpensive and blends in well or fits in with the rest of our furniture. If you're interested in taking this project on, I have a cut sheet in the description I'd love for you to use and tell me about it in the comments. And while you're down there, make sure you subscribe because we always have something fun going on around here. The first thing I'm doing is breaking down my large sheet of plywood, trying to get everything down into more manageable pieces. Anytime I'm breaking down large sheet guts, I'm using a circular saw. It's the best tool I have for it. And I always use these little cut guides that I made out of plywood. Make two marks, lay that cut guide out using, uh, basically it fits my circular saw. You can make them to fit whatever, whatever saw you want. Lay that out, clamp it to the material and use that saw, run it through there, and you're gonna get the perfect cut every time. Now that I have the blank piece of wood for the steps cut out, I'm going through and marking my steps. And so my plan for this is to basically have one large sheet of, of plywood, one large piece of board, and mark my steps out through the middle, and then I'm gonna use a jigsaw to cut that line. So one problem I encounter with this, and it maybe won't be a problem for you, but I'm just about the world's worst person to use a jigsaw. Maybe you're better. I can never get a straight cut with it. I don't like it, but this is the best tool I have for cutting out that kind of complex shape through the middle of this board. So when all was said and done, I didn't have two perfectly equal boards two perf perfectly equal pieces so they were a little bit larger a little bit smaller than the other one and the cuts were kind of rough i ended up clamping them together and trying to shape them a little bit with a sander with a rasp uh, with a handsaw none of that really worked great so you know take a little extra care get those cuts as nice as you can at this point it will save you some headache and when you go to assemble everything it'll all fit better together Now that I'm happy with how the step template works, I'm going outside to cut some equal size step pieces and the spacer blocks that hold the, everything, kind of support the apparatus, the, the assembly together in the middle. I'm using my table saw for that. Now, if you don't have a table saw, use a circular saw, use a jigsaw, use whatever you have to cut these. But for this particular task, the table saw works best for me. And so that's why I'm doing that. Prior to assembly, I took the time to sand all of the interior pieces, basically the insides of the steps and anything that was going to be hard to sand whenever I put this whole thing together. Doing that saved me a lot of time, a lot of headache, and at this point, get everything put together and however, if you have an extra set of hands or if you have some clamps, hold this thing together. I use a drill bit with a countersink, uh, a countersink bit on it so I can drill down, pre-drill for my screws bore that, that head out just a little bit, and then fasten everything together. If I remember correctly, I didn't even use wood glue for this. I would have, but I think I just forgot. So, you know what, maybe it'll completely fall apart one day, and if it does, I'll be able to put it back together, because once wood glue's together, it holds pretty much forever. So, you know what, if you want to use wood glue, go for it, and if you don't, that's fine too. We'll see how it turns out, I'll let you know. When it comes to sanding, make sure you take the time, go slow, and start out on a really aggressive grit, and then make your way up to whatever your desired finishing grit is. So here, I got some pretty rough stuff. I'm taking the time, starting out with 60 grit, 
sanding the whole outside of the assembly. And then once I get all that done, it does go quicker. Go to 80, go to 120, go to 220 from there. Whatever increments of sandpaper you have, it just makes the whole thing finish up a little bit nicer than maybe it would otherwise. This might also be the most tedious process that anyone can do. But you know what? Put your headphones in and have a good time. Once everything's sanded, it's time to finish it with whatever you want. For me, I applied a wood filler, filled in any voids in the plywood, anywhere where maybe I had a saw blade that left a little bit of a, of a rougher cut than what I would have liked. Just filled all that in nicely, applied a primer, since I'm painting and I'm gonna prime and paint this, primer first, and then I applied, uh, it was an antique country white, whatever you wanna call it. It's just, it's not quite white, it's that kind of antique white. I don't know, maybe that's why they call it that. It's just, you know, it's what it looks like. The primer really helps that white it keeps the grain of the wood from shining or, or from pulling through the white color. It, it's another, it's a few extra steps, I know, but it does make a difference. If you're going to paint something, especially painting plywood, applying that primer does help out a lot. Once the paint's on there, I applied a few coats of water-based polyurethane. I use Minwax Polycrylic. It does really well, and it doesn't yellow that white over time like an oil-based polyurethane will. Polycrylic's great. It applies quick, it dries fast, and it cleans up really easy off of your paint rollers and brushes. It's not like oil-based has a tendency to. Well, here we are with the final product, and even if it did take me much longer to complete than it should have, I'm happy with the results. We set goals whenever we decided to undertake this. Functional, inexpensive, and something that still looks good. It doesn't just stand out like a sore thumb in the house. And I think we accomplished all of those, and I'm, I'm happy with the result. Preliminary testing with Cody shows it's going to take him just a little bit of time to get used to going up and down stairs. He's just not used to it, but once he gets gets the hang of it, I think he'll 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 have it figured out. I think he's going to put plenty of use on it. If I had to if I had to guess right now, don't forget if you want to take this project on, I have a cut sheet linked down in the description box below. If you uh, decide you want to do it, tell me about it in the comments. I'd like to hear about it. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of what we've got going on around here on the farm. There's always something fun and exciting going on. I've got a goat out there in the yard getting getting on to me right now. I guess I'm ignoring him. So, hey, subscribe. We do a lot around here. It'd be fun to have you along. Thanks for watching GWP Homestead. My name's Reagan. See y'all soon.